Well, it is now uh, my opportunity to introduce our second keynote of the morning, which is going to be a panel of students from the district here uh, that's going to be moderated by Cheryl Lee Kushida and Jody Kaufman. And if you guys will go ahead and, and come up to the stage. Uh, Cheryl Lee is an OER lead and distance education coordinator at Santa Ana College. Her involvement in OER began with three courses in 2011 as part of the uh, NGLC Kaleidoscope Open Course Initiative. And it's continuing with work on two OER degree pathways, as we heard about uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, Jody Kaufman is a counselor and professor and a longtime adopter of OER materials, as well as an OER leader uh, on the Santa Ana campus. She's a founding member of the OER working group there and has been teaching online for over 10 years. Now that's Jody and Cheryl Lee, with you know, no slight meant to them, the real stars of this panel are the students. And we're going to let them introduce themselves now. Shirley Kushida, and this is Jody Kaufman, and we are representing the faculty OER work group at Santa Ana College. We're really excited, very, very excited, uh, to have this conversation with this amazing group of college students about their experiences with OER. And we'd like to uh, get started. Um, we'll have questions at the end, some time for questions, and we'd like the students to start introducing themselves. Let me add, and some of you will appreciate this, um, Jody and I are wearing t-shirts from a recent uh, OER summit that we had at the college. Can you model? <laughs> okay, turn around. Okay. But our campus independent bookstore, in hearing that we were going to be at the conference, provided uh, Santa Ana College shirts for our students. Yeah, that's really good, that's really good. We're very, we're very supported from our administrator, administration to our bookstore at Santa Ana. But I'd like to start off with um, introductions. Do you want to start, John? Sure. Okay. Good morning. My name is John Dionito. I am a Santa Ana College alum. I am currently a junior at California State University Fullerton, majoring, <laughs> woo, Titans, <laughs> majoring in business administration with the emphasis in accounting. On top of my academics and extracurricular activities, I'm also a stay-at-home dad with a three-year-old baby girl. Good morning, my name is Eduardo Iguapia. I am a third year at Santa Ana College. I am currently enrolled full-time as well at Cal State Fullerton. And on the side, I do athletics at Santa Ana College, full-time as well, and I work part-time on the weekends. Hi, my name is Michelle Maldonado. Um, I'm actually majoring in business administration. I am planning to transfer to Cal State Fullerton in the spring. I'm a mother of three. I work part-time and full-time, so that's me. Good morning, everyone. My name is Luis Ortez. I'm a junior at Biola University, majoring in sociology with the emphasis in social work. I'm also a single mother of three, and I do a lot of things outside of school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. I am still waking up. I just had my coffee, so <laughs> I hope you guys did too. Uh, my name's Eileen Zavala. I'm a full-time student at Santa Ana College. I will hopefully be transferring this spring to a Cal State. Uh, my major is Business International Relations. I am also a full-time worker. I work for a family business, so it's 24-7. Um, and we are hopefully going to share a little bit insight about OER. So. Okay, I have the first question. What courses were you enrolled in that used open educational resources at Santa Ana College? I was enrolled in a numerous amount of courses, one of them being biology, uh, earth science, macro and microeconomics, and business writing. I was enrolled in three open, um, 
open education resources uh, that offered that. Um, it was communication studies, biology, and sociology. I did three courses, so it was business writing, microeconomics, as well as uh, macro. The first course I started off with was uh, statistics, then I went on to business writing, uh, micro, macroeconomics, um, and currently I'm doing introduction to business. Uh, the courses uh, that I was enrolled in that used OER were micro and macroeconomics, uh, business writing, and earth science. Thank you. Compared to traditional textbook courses, what have you noticed using OER materials? Um, I'll answer this one. It's just the accessibility of being able to access it anywhere. Um, I can use OER when I'm at work. On my lunch breaks, I can access it there. Or I could be in the parking lot waiting for my daughter for basketball practice, log into my phone, and you know, read the material there. Or be at karate practice for my kids, <laughs> logging in as well, doing the same thing. So. Yes, they're having trouble hearing you in the back. So oh, the hi, can you hear me now? <laughs> I feel like a Verizon commercial. <laughs> oh, you're good. Anybody else? I think one thing that I notice uh, with OER compared to the traditional textbook course, I, I feel that it can liven up the, the classroom experience a whole lot. Uh, specifically with online courses, um, I, I feel that it, it definitely not only adds a lot of value, but it brings a lot of comfort and it just makes it a lot easier to learn as you will uh, gain better understanding as we go through the panel. A small comment I'd like to make about the OER courses is I feel that the OER material was actually uh, used a lot more than the standard classrooms. In the standard classrooms, uh, not all material gets used and it kind of goes to waste, whereas in the OER, you're kind of forced to use uh, every single piece of it. Thank you. What benefits have you experienced while using OER materials? Um, I believe there are a lot of benefits. Um, one that personally speaked out to me was the cost, and I believe going through the panel, that's the biggest thing you're gonna hear from us. Um, on top of that, uh, we live in such a technological era where we have accessibility to Wi-Fi at any coffee shop at any restaurant, any place almost, um, most shopping centers. So being able to access OER from any computer, from our cell phones, from any hotspot, it's allowed us to interact with school more. Um, I know personally for me, as I was going through OER, I was very selective with what classes I was gonna take. Um, and rather than putting the money towards textbook classes, costs, I was able to put the money towards parking permits for school, gas, um, clothes, because clothes is definitely important, what you're gonna wear to school. Um, and I was able to put the money from textbooks to other things. Um, I was able to buy a car this year, uh, which was my first big girl purchase. And so thankfully, um, from the textbook money, I was able to put a down payment on that and save with that as well. I feel like I personally benefited from it because I was able to maximize my potential um, with the courses I was taking, rather than, I guess you can say, I was a big procrastinator. Um, with OER, it was kind of like I had no excuses of, oh, I left my textbook at home. I'm not gonna be able to do my homework, or oh, I won't be able to have time because I have all of this other stuff. Now, there's no excuse for me. I'm required to do this stuff, and it's been able to help me with my classes and get further with my classes as well. I honestly had a lot of benefits um, from having these materials. Uh, first and foremost, the ability for me to read anywhere, just like Michelle said. Um, being a single mom of three, every single minute of my day is consumed um, by something. So um, I usually just sleep like three hours because it's, it was so important for me to not waste my children's time by going back to school and being a single mom. Um, I felt like that was my motivation, like I finished my associates within a year, but that was just because I did not want to waste their time. <laughs> um, I went back to school um, in February of 2016, and I, at the beginning when I was just taking um, 
like with the textbooks, it's hard for me to carry that big backpack with all those textbooks because there's no lockers in community colleges. Um, so carrying all of that and then having to worry about my kids and their things and the diaper bag and all of that, um, it was really beneficial for me to be able to read at 12 o'clock at night, 3 o'clock at night in the morning, um, but also whenever I was waiting for my kids to get to pick them up or whenever I was um, waiting in line for my lunch or whatever it was, I was able to just log in and read. Um, I currently decided to, I purchased an iPad just so I can um, have the accessibility to get more on, um, like electronic resources. Most of my, I only have two books that I purchased, um, like actual textbooks, but everything else is on online. And if I was here, I could have been reading, well, thankfully, if I was interested in what I was listening to, but um, if, you know, it, it's in little moments like that where I can read for five minutes, advance my, I actually like to read my books. Everyone thinks I'm weird, but I, I gain a lot just by reading. So um, not only is it beneficial because of time, but also money. Money and time are of an essence for me. Um, yeah, basically that's, I, I think all of us, all of us agree on that. Yeah, definitely the cost factor is one of the major things. Um, the fact that OER was offered, it allows me to put my kids into extracurricular activities versus spending money on books. So that's one of the major factors for me. Um, time is another thing, so, oh, sorry. Um, so another one was time. Time for me is um, very valuable, especially with three kids. They're all very busy, so I'm on, a go on the go all the time. Um, when we have quizzes and that kind of thing, so it's open book. So when you're searching for things, instead of me having to go to the end of the book to find what I'm looking for, then flip through the pages, I can just do control find and find a vocabulary word and then just go back and, and reread it. It, it. it allows us to, to lessen that, that time factor of having to search, so. One of my favorite things about OER was uh, it had tailored to the different learning styles I was able to watch videos when I wasn't able to understand what I was reading. And the way I, um, the text was, it was very, uh, I felt simplified to me, so I understood it more. And uh, that was my favorite thing about OER. It's funny, Luisa, you mentioned about textbooks. So I, I go to uh, Cal State Fullerton, and if you've heard anything about the parking, the parking is horrible. So we have, I think we hit a record number of students enrolled this semester of a little over 40,000 students at Cal State Fullerton. So you can just imagine how many parking spots are, are left open for you or for our students. But um, with me, I, I'm at the campus library almost every night until midnight. You know, thankfully they, they're open until midnight. And we sometimes, if we have to, we have to park at an off-site location because of parking. So um, for me to, to lug around these heavy textbooks, it, it's, it's it's, it's a burden, because by the time I actually sit down in the library, a big part of me doesn't really want to study. <laughs> so um, it, it definitely, uh, with OER, it was definitely, a, a, to have the leisure of having it at my fingertips is, is a huge benefit. But one thing that I want to point out, and I think this is really important, I remember uh, last year when I was uh, in my earth science course, I, I was up late at night and I was watching a video a video clip of my professor. She put together these uh, images, these video clips, but her voice was embedded in the background. So I think it was, I think it was about one o'clock at night and I had my lights off and I was just, just staring at the screen and listening to this lecture. And as soon as the video ended, I, I, I had completely forgot that I was at home. I, I thought I was in the classroom and I thought it was so silly that I, I got up and I just started laughing, like, oh, I'm at home. And I'm, I'm serious, it was so funny, you had to be there. Um, you, I was like, oh. But what I'm really trying to get at is that OER has the potential to be very engaging. So it, it had my undivided attention for sure. Thank you, John. Uh, <laughs> that particular earth science class, I know Many of you might be wondering, I'll try to interject here and there. This was a Candela earth science class that you were taking. Um, next question, how much of a factor was the cost of your course materials and course selection? Uh, cost played a, a, 
a huge, huge factor when it came to selecting my courses. Uh, for, I remember, I remember this very vividly. Last, last year, fall semester, or I was registering for classes from my fall semester of 2016. And I had realized that I wasn't going to be able to afford one of my textbooks. And just a little bit of background uh, about me. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a full-time student, I'm a stay-at-home dad, and I'm married. And all three of us, my wife, my daughter, and I, we're surviving on one income. And it's, it's super hard. It's, it's a struggle today. And I, I found out that since I wasn't going to be able to enroll into that course or take that course, I was going to have to push, it, uh, push that course to the next semester. And by pushing it to the next semester, it, it prolonged. Uh, my, my graduation date would, it, it, it just uh, fell out of schedule. It, I actually would have to be, well, I would have to postpone it a full academic year. Um, and which was, it was really devastating. It, was, it, it just crushed me. A part of me thought maybe I should just drop out and just go back to work. But, you know, I have to watch, you know, I have to take care for my daughter. But as I was looking through the courses, I found an OER course. It satisfied the requirements needed to uh, stay on track with my ed plan. And so the cost benefit of OER, it, it really helped a lot. I was able to stay on track with my ed plan. I was able to graduate from the community college, and I was able to transfer to the university right on schedule. I also just want to add something. Um, thankfully, I had the resources to purchase the books because I was involved in so many programs at Santa Ana College. Um, but I am aware of, I worked at the EOPS Resource Center, and thankfully they have book loans, they, have, they loan you the calculator, but they also offer um, a limited amount of money for students that are coming in that are in need of um, financial help. The amount is $300. If you're in a macro or micro economics class, that's about how much that book costs. So I think that the benefit for single parents or stay-at-home parents or parents that are coming back in, um, usually, for, for my, from my point of view, from my experience, I came in broken. I had just gotten out of a, a really bad relationship, and when I came in, um, I was broken, and I did not need any, any additional challenges. Going back to school was like my only choice, because if I didn't go back to school, I would end up working dead-end jobs and leaving my children alone most of the time. I didn't want that cycle to continue in my life and in my children's life. So I basically went and I asked for all the help that I can get at Santa Ana College, and they offer a lot of help. But for students that don't have children, for students that are coming back, that are, that are, um, that are students, the DACA students, they don't have all the help that I was able to receive. So $300 does not go a long way when you're a business major. Sometimes students have to choose another major even if they don't want to go into that major just because of, of the financial situation that they're in. And also some of them just do like quick, um, like the vocational, uh, like the quick uh, careers because of money, because of time. You know, they have, to, they have to hurry up. They have to get things done. And it's all back to, because I have to get back to work. So I think that when we do the open, um, the, these OER resources, the fact that one of my classes only cost me $5 for the book. It was a materials fee. $5, I can get $5 anywhere. And most of them were free, so for me, uh, that I know a lot of single parents, a lot of them are already taking these classes. And as a single parent, I took these classes. Not because of the money, because at the time I was getting help, um, but now that I'm taking classes that I'm purchasing books for, it's, it's a little bit cheaper too. So um, what I think is that these resources are so helpful in so many areas, in so many groups, for so many people. And if you take in consideration to participate and be a part of these books, I mean, resources, you would not just be helping one standard student. You would be helping a broad spectrum of students. I think as we continue to talk about the open educational resources, you guys will definitely see how cost was a major factor for the five of us sitting up here on this stage. Um, as well as for the endless amount of students that also go to community college. 
One of the reasons why we chose community college is because of the cost of college itself. It's starting off at $40,000 a year just for tuition, not including on-campus fees, the extra parking fees, the gas you have to put in. Some people pay, um, use buses to commute to school. So aside from the textbooks and, and the units that we're taking, we also have to put into consideration all the extra stuff it's gonna take to get us to school. Um, a little background on myself. Um, my dad lost his job in 2014, which was the year I was graduating from high school and entering into community college. I had the hopes and dreams of going straight to a university, but unfortunately, because of my fin financial situation, that was taken away from me. And I understood, and I was okay with that, and I felt that community college was a safer option for me. Um, that way I could explore a little bit more. Uh, luckily for me, I had a sister who had entered into community college prior than I did, and she was able to experience a lot of the stuff that you would need to, um, just to understand how college works, because it is confusing. Um, so luckily for me, I had a mentor going into it, but even with her taking the path before I did, it was very confusing, and I was lost. And a lot of students going in don't ask questions about how to get help for resources or how to get your classes paid for. A lot of students don't know how strenuous the process is and don't want to go through it. And they simply just don't ask enough questions. I was one of those students. Um, so OER is so beneficial for us for costs because taking away a textbook that costs from $100 to $300 is major. I am the type of student where I personally like taking accelerated courses. I enjoy the eight-week courses. I enjoy intercession classes, summer classes. I do best in those classes. And so if I'm paying $300 for a textbook where I'm only going to need for eight weeks and eight weeks only, it's, it's just the cost is just way too high for my personal opinion. And I feel that you guys who also went through school understand what we're going through. Um, and so all I can say is, not only is the program beneficial for us, but the cost is beneficial for us. So I hope you guys would consider keeping that in your mind when you're exploring the option of taking these OER conferences and courses and incorporating it into your everyday life for students like us. What advice do you have for faculty who used OER in your classes? Uh, something that I would say, well, what kind of advice can I give to people that know what they're doing? Um, um, one thing that I would say, for the first time that I took the OER material, my professor, she was new to it too. Um, she let us know that she was new to it. I didn't expect, it was my first class doing this. So I just kind of went with the flow. But um, something that I would say is break it down into modules. Um, according to the material that you want us to review for that week, for that month, um, for that day. Because the first time that I took the class, the professor just loaded the entire book and I literally sat there like 30 minutes clicking to chapter 15. Um, so at that time, uh, she did, wasn't aware that she could break it into modules, but as I kept on taking the classes, the other professors that I took, the other two professors did break it into modules and they also loaded at the, um, like for week one, they uploaded the entire book, um, but they also broke it down into modules. So when it came to midterms or finals, um, we can go to the beginning of the, of the course and just uh, search. So whenever we needed to study, we could just search and it would pull up whatever uh, page, it, the information that we needed for the question that we had, um, which was helpful for me. Uh, something that I wanted to add to a previous question is in regards to time with the OER material, because time is such of an essence for us as moms and for me as a single mom, I don't want to go through a textbook for 20 minutes to find something that I already highlighted but I didn't write all my notes and then I can't find it. So for me, I need to study for two hours, three hours in the middle of the night and going back through the book to just find something that I can't find is very difficult. So now what I can do is just go on to my material search what I, my, the question that I have, and then it'll pop up, which helps me study and makes my study time more productive. So um, that would be one thing, and then just going back to the um, advice I would give the faculty, is just break it into modules, and 
work with someone that has already ha that already has the experience um, because they know the ways around things. They they've already you know um, had the trouble. They've already experienced it. So. Um, that way you learn the material and help us learn the material, especially when we're coming in for the first time. I would like to add that um, putting in interactive tools with the OER is great. I had the opportunity to take macro and microeconomics, so with the um, reading of the chapters, um, towards the end they would offer like practice questions to see if you've actually retained the information. So that kind of helped prep me for the end of the week quizzes. Um, also, well, actually, that's really it, just the interactive. It helps us engage more in reality, so. Yeah, the only advice I would have to faculty is to tailor it to the different learning styles, uh, visually, auditory, kinesthetic, if possible. I had a stats professor that used Excel, um, since that was the most affordable for all of us, to try to get us to understand the concept uh, by typing it out and just seeing uh, what would happen as we typed it in and what would happen on screen. So I thought that was uh, pretty cool. If, well, I've had a great experience thus far with OER. If I had to give one piece of advice to professors who use it, I, I'd probably encourage them to maybe add a voice uh, to the material that you provide. Um, by hearing how passionate you are about the subject you're teaching, um, it, it goes a long way. Um, it's, as we've all mentioned, it, it can be very engaging and um, it just makes the, the class even more fun and, and enjoyable to, to hear you. And you know, you get a lot of students, hundreds and thousands of students each semester. We get one of you in our lifetime. You know, so it's something, <laughs> it's something to think about. Thank you. Um, the economics classes uh, that were referred to were uh, Waymaker Economics and uh, Open OpenStax for the uh, stats classes. Um, now, here's an interesting question. What advice do any of you have for faculty who has not yet implemented OER? Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do the OER, trust me, it, it's amazing. Uh, no, that's not it. Um, well, that is it, but I also want to say thank you to the teachers who already have implemented it in their programs and their teaching style. It's been a huge help for everybody that's has had access to it so far. As for the teachers that haven't used it, um, during syllabus week, during the first week of class, first day of class, teachers tell us, if you're taking a three unit class, you're expected to put 40 plus hours into this class just to pass it. If you want to get an A, you're expected to put more. The expectations for students nowadays is so high and how many hours we're expected to put into that class and the effort as well that asks, that's asked of us is so high. So the only thing that we ask of you is to put in the same amount of work that you're requesting from us. Teachers nowadays are leading by example and we see how much effort you guys put in for us and so to see teachers who go that extra mile to see the extra resources that are out there for students like us, we notice. It doesn't go unnoticed, I promise you. And so if you guys are just taking the time here today to see what options are out there, it will change just one student's life. You, you wouldn't even know. Like, when I took OER, it, it changed my life, and now almost every class that I'm taking is an OER resource, so thank you, and consider it, please. Thank you. Now that you know about OER, what are you going to do now? Yell it from the rooftop. <laughs> Thankfully, my counselor was the one that introduced me to OER and told me that there are numer of numerous of courses um, that are offered, not a lot, and hopefully throughout these years, now that it's um, being brought out more, there will be more courses to offer. Um, but for me personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my little sister. Um, as I said prior, I have an older sister who had no idea what OER is and has learned from me now what it was and wishing that she had access to it prior. Um, but now that I have a little sister going through college, I'm going to make sure she knows that she has these options. 
um, to lower down textbook costs. So hopefully everyone will do the same here by just letting a friend know. I have currently told a lot of people <laughs> um, about the OER material. Um, I was a part of the care program at Santa Ana College, which is for single parents. Um, a lot of them are already taking the OER uh, re classes, but not only that, they um, are also spreading the word. Also, because of the things that I do outside of school, there's a lot of people that ask me, like, how did you do it? I want to go back to school. They found motivation um, in what I have done. So there's actually someone that I'm working with right now to get her back into school because she's like 40 years old and she feels like she's been out of school for so long, uh, she doesn't know what to do. So I know now that OER offers, I mean, um, yeah, the OER material is offered full courses, full, uh, you can do, get your AA straight through, not even have to put a foot on campus. So for her, she was so, so happy to be able to go back to school, not have to spend, either it's like $5 for one class or maybe it's free. Um, so she's happy with the fact that it's not gonna really cost her anything to go back to school other than her putting in her effort which is already a lot. She's a mother of four children. So she's already doing a lot. She's already putting out a lot. So for her to be able to receive an education, for her to be able to take uh, courses that allow her to learn and acquire the knowledge and put her on the track to fulfilling the desires of her heart and pursue the degree that she wants to and the career that she wants to, I know for a fact that we are all gonna change someone in this world, um, either by a gesture or by what we say. So all of us in our careers are gonna impact the world. Um, and I feel like this conference is already gonna impact so many lives and so many other lives are gonna be impacted just because of the opportunities that we're speaking about today. As one of the captains of the cross country team, I feel it's my obligation to let my younger teammates know that these resources are available to them they already spent a lot of money uh, on running shoes, running clothes, and those are uh, expenses that unfortunately sometimes they can't make because they have to make them for the textbooks or material fees. So for them, having the access to the OER resources would be a huge benefit for them. Uh, going forward, since I know about OER now, uh, well, one of my goals is to become a CPA. and. Um, through, uh, I recently learned that I'll be able to take some courses outside of the university. So um, I'm really excited for that because uh, currently right now at Cal State Fullerton, there's, uh, I don't think there's any courses that offer OER, unfortunately. Um, yeah, there are, okay. Okay, I think we have to talk after this. We gotta, we de we're definitely gonna talk, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm probably not there yet, I'm not there yet, okay. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, um, but I did learn that I can take some courses off campus, uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to um, really seeing what my options are, and um, OER uh, courses are definitely at the top of my list. And um, I'm definitely gonna be an advocate for OER because you're only, you only have five of us up here on the stage and you've heard all of the great things or how positive uh, of an impact it has, but you're, you're missing out on a whole world of students out there, and so I'm definitely gonna keep spreading the news about it. Uh, because it's, it's gonna go so far, I, I already know it. Thank you. Um, here's a question that I think uh, some faculty would be interested in, uh, in addition. Based on your experience with OER, what is your feeling for the need uh, and use of printed materials? Oh. Okay. As far as printed materials, uh, well, when I first started using OER, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna admit, I. I was a little unsure of where this was going to go. Um, it, was, it was definitely foreign to me, uh, but very quickly I, I, came and realized, I came to realize that it was very easy to use. Uh, I slowly started to lean away from using uh, textbooks or felt the need for it. Um, personal experience, uh, one night I was studying at Coffee Bean and I forgot the laptop to my charger, which I use. And my, my, I remember my battery was gonna die, and eventually it did, my, my laptop died. And at that point, I did think like, oh, okay, maybe I, I need a book, maybe I need something printed, but I have my phone. <laughs> Luckily for OER, it's mobile friendly. 
<laughs> it definitely helped. I was able to do my homework. I was able to study. I was able to complete everything I needed to do um, that night. So um, as far as prints and materials go, I, I feel that I think wherever you are with technology, you know, it, it's, 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 it's moving so fast. And I think OER is just adjusting to it. And so it's, I, I feel the need for printed materials. Uh, I don't really, I see it not, I, I don't see uh, uh, a great need for it later on. It's just so easy to use, mobile friendly, as I said, um, navigating through the menus, it's very easy. Um, as one of the panelists mentioned, uh, we don't have to flip through so many pages in the textbook to find what we need on a certain topic. Uh, so yeah, it definitely helps. As a student, I feel that the printed materials sometimes end up just getting lost. And I mean, after I lose them, what am I going to do? Ask the professor for another one? It's kind of, kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but <laughs> they're accessible online. So if I do lose them, I know where to go back and get them. So I feel that's very convenient. I just have to add, it's green. So we'll be saving trees. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to save a lot of trees, actually. Um, something that I wanted to say is that at the beginning, I was printing my textbook from online because I didn't know. It was, it was just it was hard for me at the beginning. I, didn't, I wasn't used to it. I, I didn't even realize that I sent into a class like that. So then when I started printing it, it started getting expensive. So I just decided not to print it. Um, and then I realized I can still highlight on the page online and I can still write notes. I can add my notes to the page. So I don't, I don't need that anymore. I don't need the printed material. What I do now is I highlight and I write notes on um, my, my device. But also, as I'm reading, I'm also writing notes on my, on my notebook because I just like to write. Um, so I like to write it out. And whatever is most impactful for me, I just write it out on my notebook. But then I can go back and search for my notes, too, and search for what I highlighted. So, I don't think that there's a big need for uh, printed material. Had you asked me two years ago to do an online open resource, I would have said, hell no. Um, I did not like using online. I thought it was just going to be a distraction for me. And it's funny, because I was actually talking to my little sister yesterday. And she asked me what panel I was speaking on and to tell her a little bit more about it. And so I asked her, I was like, Aviana, do you like using textbooks? And she's like, yeah. She's like, if I go online, Eileen, I'm just going to watch Netflix. I'm just going to play games all day. Like, it's just a distraction for me. And I was like, well, you can print out the materials. And she's like, I didn't think about that. So OER is online, but you can also print out the materials. And as much as we want to go green, you can use recycled paper, or the back of the paper that you've already used from old classes, to just print it out. So you're still saving trees. Um, <laughs> So it's still green friendly. There's so many ways um, this can be beneficial. So going green, being online, like Louisa said, we can just highlight on um, our computer screen. Well, not on our computer screen, but <laughs> they have programs for that now. So for people saying that I don't do good online, that I need a textbook, I need something hard copy, you still have that option. So there's really no excuse as to, oh, OER is not for me. So I'm currently taking a course, Women's Studies, and um, a lot of the students, we're barely five weeks in, not barely, we're five weeks in, and um, some of the students are still waiting on their books, you know what I mean? Um, our instructor has actually talked to the, the bookstore saying, you know, we need to get our books, there's students waiting. If we had OERE, these students wouldn't be waiting for their, their course material. It would be readily available to them. So I just had to add that, you know, students won't be having to wait. That's a good point. That's a good point. I want to add one more thing. Think about your children, if you have any. In the future, I mean, if we're like, I mean, hopefully I come to middle class one day, one day in my life. Um, I move up the, the social status. But um, I have three kids that I'm going to have to provide money for them to go to college. So for me, having to save money on books, Yay. Like, I want that. Think about your kids when they grow up. The materials that are going to be available for them, hopefully they're still free. All of this benefits all of us, not only ourselves, but our children and our children's children. So I think that overall, OER is so beneficial. 
Yep. Is there anything else you would like to add? The only thing I'd like to say is I was the only one of uh, the five of us that took an OER math course. And some comments I'd like to make is that I really liked how the professor implemented videos. For the longest time, like uh, reading about uh, math material is in my strong suit. I need to visually see it and see how the formula plays out and stuff like that. So I found that uh, very helpful. And I also found it helpful to, as I was reading, the professor would have examples built into the this or the software for me to right away practice on it as I read up on it. So I found it very convenient. Um, I, I don't know too much about the logistics behind OER, but from what I understand, it's only in its preliminary stages. And so it's only going to get better from here. Uh, we, we've all been successful. I, I think we all got A's in most of our classes that use OER. And not saying. Uh, And I'm not saying that it makes it easier. It's, it's definitely a grind, for sure. We still have to work hard at it, OK? <laughs> but um, uh, it, it's only going to get better. And, and I think that um, if, if you were to integrate it, I mean, if you haven't used it yet, or do you plan on using it, um, as I said earlier, there's so many underlying benefits to them, just the cost. And if it's only going to get better, there's going to be more benefits to it. Thank you. I think we have time for a couple of questions. It's the benefit of sitting in the front, folks. <laughs> Hi, um, I work with faculty in Georgia on adopting OER. And something that I hear quite a bit, and something that just about everyone in the room hears quite a bit, is about quality. Um, quality, of course, is somewhat subjective. Oh, I like this big glossy cover, or I like the way that this chapter is worded. Have you, in taking a course with OER, ever said, oh, the quality of this material is worse or better or comparable? Or what do you think about that? You know, that's a great question. And I, I feel the quality, I think it depends on the professor, um, depends on the course. Um, when I first started using OER, it was definitely in its early stages. I mean, it still is, but I, I've had some professors who put a little bit more effort into it than others. Um, but uh, on average, with the courses that I've taken, they, they were really good. The, qu the quality was great. I was able to understand the material. Um, I, I felt that the, I, I feel that OER can provide textbook information, but more concise. So it, it's, uh, it's easier to understand. And yeah, it's uh, the quality. I haven't, I haven't had any bad experience with OER uh, whatsoever. So you say the quality of an OER course really is the quality of the professor putting their time in, just yes. like with a commercial textbook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, adding on to that, uh, working with uh, Lumen, uh, Waymaker, and My Open Math, I felt that the quality of those materials was comparable to the actual textbook. Yeah, and also in regards to the textbook quality, the textbook quality is actually the same or even better um, and more up to date than the older textbooks and the textbooks that are coming up. So. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot through that. <laughs> um, so in regards to the textbook quality, it's really good. And it's, it's I can, re I can um, relate to it better, uh, especially when I, when I was taking the sociology course because it's something that I, I'm passionate about. Understanding the terms and the concepts was very important to me. And when it comes to um, what he was saying, it depends on the teachers, how you develop your course. I had an excellent an excellent biology teacher. Um, she, I am not a science person. Um, so this was like, I was actually afraid of going into the biology class because I hadn't taken a science class in a really long time. So she did everything. She put music on it. She spoke on it. She put notes on it. She did everything. Um, she did the work. She worked the material herself. And I got an A in that class. So I'm, I, I liked it. <laughs> um, on the Twitter back channel, lots of people, I think, 
are thinking about booking you guys to come um, <laughs> to do, but really, right, to do faculty development, I think particularly like, you know, regionally in, in California. So I have uh, two suggestions. One is maybe you guys could put together a little um, site that you could put out so that people who want to bring these folks to faculty development um, but also maybe even to talk with other students. I think both would be helpful. But then I was also thinking more widely because it may not be convenient or possible for folks to travel that we should get some regional groups of students um, all over who could come and do this kind of work. So I don't know if that's a project you'd be interested in spearheading not just for yourselves but maybe collating yeah. student groups from other areas who might also be able to do this work. But I think a lot of us were thought that Wow, why do I keep going doing faculty development when I could be bringing you guys instead? Um, it was awesome. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> We're open for hire, so if anybody wants to hire us, <laughs> meet us back there. We have entrepreneurs here at Santa Ana College. <laughs> Uh, so my name's Caitlin. I'm with PERG, the Public Interest Research Groups. We have students that run grassroots campaigns promoting OER across the country. Um, my question is, you know, once we convince professors to adopt OER um, and admin to support the process, what do you think are some good platforms that we can do outreach to other students to help them find out which classes have OER and where to find those resources? At our school, we have it in the admissions office. It's all over. Um, a great way just for students when they're coming in is just like um, like when you're going on to the to the to the website to uh, add like uh, fill out your admissions application. I think um, it should be like a pop up. You know, do you want to try OER? Um, just in, in in already integrated within the system itself, and also um, at least at our school we have it like where we're applying there. Um, so we have the option. We were aware of it. Also, like in the EO, for community colleges, um, in the resource centers for when students are coming, you know, the low-income students or students that are in need, I think that the counselors and, and um, the faculty that are going to be available to help them should let them know and make them aware. You know, we have more cost-efficient courses, um, online resources. Uh, if you need help, you know, navigating the system, we have people ready to help you. I think that would be a great way to... Um, a great platform for students to be able to become aware of it. I, do we have any, are there any specific social media uh, methods that, that students might prefer, that you folks might pr prefer? Uh, I, I believe Instagram might be like a, a big one. <laughs> you guys might try advertising it on the school's uh, Instagram page. Uh, I feel like most of the students f have a school pride enough to follow their, their school's Instagram page, so that might be a big one. So a lot of students go on there, a lot of professors and faculty go on there. I think that that would be a really great um, platform for it to be exposed. Um, in regards to like Facebook, I don't, I didn't really like, like the SAC Facebook page until I graduated. I mean, I wasn't aware of it until after I graduated. So um, I don't know how, how much or how many students would, you know, follow, follow the school that they're in um, as they start going to school. So. Um, I think that Overheard is a really good platform. Thank you, guys. Sandra. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank our student panel as well for taking the time to come today. Thank you. Thank you very much.